Hello and welcome to the Autistic Experience, your autism and ADHD podcast for brains with more time than work, which <laughs> looking at the employment statistics as most of us, so yeah. it works. Uh, my name <laughs> unlike is us. Unlike yeah. Us. Hey. Uh, <laughs> my name is Kieran, as always, joined by Chloe. Hi. Hi. So, a bit of an announcement right off the top. Uh, This was put onto our Instagram page at The Autistic Experience. Uh, Last Sunday, we're officially moving to a bi-weekly release schedule. Mm -hmm. That's once every two weeks, not twice a week, (laughs) by the way. Basically, the reason being that uh, due to our work commitments we get not a lot of time where we're both not working yeah or like we're both completely brain awake and engaged and ready to go (laughs) yeah so basically if it's a day that one of us is at work then it's quite difficult to summon the brain energy to record anything Mm -hmm. afterwards which I'm sure you can understand. And one of those days happens to be the day this is meant to go out on. So as you can imagine, it's quite difficult to uh, record an episode, edit it, and get it published on the day it's meant to go out. (laughs) So what we're going to be trialing is shifting to a once every other week schedule. So then one week it can get released, and then the next week we record an episode. It also hopefully helps us uh, not kind of use this as a bit of an afterthought. We go, oh, wait, we need to record an episode. Ah. (laughs) Yeah. We expected it. Yeah. (laughs) So it'll hopefully allow us to build it into our schedule a little bit more rather than going, um... And we'll have plenty to talk about in each episode as well. Yeah, exactly. There will be a lot to talk about. Hopefully like two weeks worth of stuff. (laughs) Yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing from now on. So let's see what our experience has brought us in these last two weeks. I think the main one to talk about is quite a bit of a it's a bit of a sad topic, but um you lost your earplugs. <laughs> I did, yeah. I don't know how. I don't know where. I don't know when. But they are gone. And usually Well we we do know when. Yeah, I know when, but not exactly we have, when. We have a window of time. Yeah. And but... it's a window of about four minutes. Because <laughs> that's your commute to work. It is true, yeah, to be fair. But Basically, I wear my, I've got some of those flare earplugs, um, which are just like the silicon sort of, supposed to reduce the sharpness of noise. It Mm. doesn't really kind of mute anything. It just makes it a bit more bearable. I had some of those. I wear them basically all the time when I'm at work and out of the house pretty much. And sometimes in the house. Yeah, like they're pretty good um, just for making things a little bit as the name suggests, karma, <laughs> mm. and just protecting my ears that are a bit ringy sometimes due to a concert that I went to a few years ago that I foolishly didn't have mm. any for. Anyway, I came home one night after work and put them where they usually go on my table. And then the following morning, I must have picked them up and put them in my pocket as I usually do to take them to work. And then when I arrived at work, They had disappeared. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they went, but they were no longer where they were. Yeah. And it was very annoying. (laughs) We did a bit of a kind of recce, didn't we, (laughs) of each end of my journey to work um, to try and find them. And sadly, they are lost. So Mm. I had to get some new ones. But um, yeah, it's one of the perils of... The ADHD mind, <laughs> isn't it, really? Yeah, because th- this isn't even the first time something like this has happened. No, I did it with... You got me some very handy sunglasses for 
like polarized sunglasses for work. Yeah, there were floaty ones as well. Yeah, so I couldn't so, drop them in the water. Like reason. you did your phone. Yeah, like I did. Oh God, that's another story. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I had some nice polarized sunglasses that helped me not get eye overstimulation when I was at work at, the, at my water sports job because obviously sun reflecting off water is pain. And I managed to drop those, I think, out of my pocket on the way to work and never found them again. Mm -hmm. So I had to buy some more. Um, I managed to stick my phone down my buoyancy aid jacket at work to listen to some music. I forgot it was in there, stepped out of the boat and it fell out of the bottom and through the probably about one inch gap between the boat and the jetty and then sunk down to the bottom of mm-hmm. the water never to be seen again so i had to buy a new phone <laughs> mm-hmm. and then the other day i put my earplugs in my pocket i must have not zipped it up properly and then went to work and they fell out and they had never to be seen again <laughs> mm-hmm. so i had to buy some more <sighs> so when we talk about the adhd tax for the most part it tends to be about you get invested in new hobbies and you buy loads of stuff for them only to never actually use them. Or you like you buy a load of books and you never read them. You buy a load of games and you never play them. Yeah. In your case, it's more replacing stuff that goes missing. Which, yeah. Which does also count within the ADHD tax. Yeah, but this is like me. I, I'm quite clumsy with things. And despite the fact that this has happened multiple times before with multiple things you also managed to drop your phone within a day of getting it oh uh, what and the the one and that you, i've currently yeah got. you managed to chip it yeah i dropped it on the the bathroom floor at work and chipped the screen protector in the corner of the phone um oh and i've got another chip in the screen protector now and i don't know where that's come from but it's right in the middle <laughs> yeah Despite the fact that I've had many cases of losing things and damaging things and having to replace them, and I try and be careful, I really do try and be careful with things and try and be aware, it still keeps happening somehow. Uh (laughs) And I don't know how, I don't know why this happens, but it just does. It's like my mind is just not, sometimes it's just not engaged or aware of, like it's not engaged with what I'm doing at all. And I'm leaving the house for work and I don't even think about like my pockets being zipped up. And the worst thing is my earplugs were in the same pocket as both, oh, as my phone. And so like if the pocket was open, (laughs) it's just a good thing that it was the earplugs that went. But like, it's just like, why is my mind not aware of this? Do you know what I mean? Why can't I remember to check it? (laughs) Well, I mean, that's one of the things an ADHD brain does it kind of just takes information and then just drops it somewhere yeah pretty much yeah so like you know you don't remember picking up the earplugs and putting them in your pocket like no. that morning or like we don't remember things people tell us i remember earlier when <laughs> I, I was wiping something with a cloth and you're like I'll, I'll need that cloth after you yeah. and then about four seconds later i'd forgotten it and put the cloth, yeah, put the cloth away, away. Yeah. So i had to ask again yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just like, it's one of the difficult things because, at least for me, I find it quite hard to not be really annoyed at myself. So like when I when I lost the sunglasses and when I lost my earplugs the other day, like I was, I think I was more annoyed about those because people have got them for me. So like you got me the glasses and my mum mm. bought me the earplugs for Christmas and it's like... It's it's even more annoying when someone else has got them. But either way, if it happens and I realise I've lost another thing or I've broken another thing or I've been clumsy again or careless again, like you really, it's really easy to punish yourself and just think, God, like, why am I so stupid? And like, you've got to be aware of that and be careful with that, really, because I know it's not, you know, it's not my fault. It's still hard, isn't it, to accept that Mm. kind of part of your brain and not punish yourself for it? Well, I I think, you know, that's one part of it. But there is another entire different half of the situation where someone 
in both those occasions, someone has just seen either a pair of sunglasses or like this little pouch, probably in the road somewhere and just gone, I'm having that. Yeah, I know. That also annoys me. Because I think, like, on what planet would somebody see a pouch in the cycle lane and go, oh, yeah, I'm pick that up. And then maybe they've gone into it and found that it's a pair of earplugs. Like, who the hell would use those? Why would you use those? Yeah, second-hand earplugs. No, thanks. Yeah, like, surely you'd just leave it there. Or, like, if you really wanted to do something with it, hand it in somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm. But, like, things like sunglasses and that. If I saw a pair of sunglasses on the floor out and about, I'd just leave them. I'd just ignore them or, like, put them on a wall nearby or yeah. something. But, like, you wouldn't... I wouldn't take them with me. <laughs> just really bizarre. And it annoys me to think that someone else out there has probably picked up my, my flares and either taken them home to use them themselves or realised that they're earplugs and thought, ooh, I'm not using someone else's lost earplugs and then just, I don't know, thrown them somewhere else. It's just Ooh, annoying, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit of a pain and it can often have, as with the phone story, quite a big financial consequence. Yeah. <laughs> I've also just remembered the time you managed to drop your passport out of your pocket. Oh, God, that was the worst one, I think. Yeah, when we were walking, we went on a walk around a little kind of woodlandy area. It was in Norfolk. Yeah, this was, was ages quite, ago. Quite rural. And it was literally, I think we didn't see anyone else the whole time. And we were just wandering along all nice and peaceful. And then this older couple came up to us and sort of said like, oh, has either of you lost a passport or anything? And we were both like, no. It's like, who, who, who would possibly have a passport with them going for a random yeah, walk? Yeah, and then... What sort of person, what sort of weirdo... <laughs> takes a passport with them yeah i was like oh no no i would i would and then I, I don't know what flipped in my head but suddenly i think i just thought oh hold on actually i think i might have had my passport on me and then they wanted to like check my identity even though it's literally got my face yeah on it's it, got it's got a photo of you in it like it, it ended up being my passport and i was like i can't actually believe that a, I had it, and B, it fell out of my pocket at some point. I didn't notice, and it could have just been left in the middle of this little woodland trail or, like, picked up by someone and taken, or like, that would have been that would have been a big thing to replace yeah. and not ideal. <laughs> so, uh, I no doubt it will happen again. It's just nobody knows when. Yeah, well, I I think all of these things have come from not having pockets zipped up properly. <laughs> yeah, and yet I still And yet it still apparently happens. can't zip up my pockets properly. And no doubt, I don't know what the next thing will be that I lose or when it'll be, Who but knows? there will be Place something. Place your bets, folks. There will be something. As long as it's not the shop keys. Yeah, that hasn't happened yet. Although I did get to the shop the other day and realized I didn't have one of them. But it was the least important one. I could still get in without it. But I just left that one at home. So <laughs> Annoying. A very annoying feature yeah. of the brain here. But anyway, what else? Well, uh, you've managed to injure your knee somehow. Oh, yeah. That's another thing I do when it is mysterious injuries. Yeah. Well, I think what I've probably done is overworked it at some point. It's overworked. <laughs> <laughs> And again, I don't know when, I don't know how, it just happened. And I don't know when, I don't know how, I just know something's wrong right now. Why? Out of the sea. <laughs> yeah, I felt It is my knee. <laughs> it's hurting now. I think what I've done is I've like aggravated a tendon or something. I don't know. But that's been frustrating in a different way for my my adhd brain in that i've had to sit still and rest it <laughs> hmm. and that is very difficult for me <laughs> yeah also it doesn't help me the, the the constant movement of your leg that needs to be staying still <laughs> is usually on me <laughs> It just so, so there's a lot of just leg <laughs> movement and ankle movement. Like <laughs> I don't even notice that. <laughs> I just did it again. 
But honestly, like, I mean, I've had quite a busy week at work, so I've had to be careful with using it at work. But like, in my mind, there's that part of me that, you know, kind of wants to be like active and do a bit of physical activity. I want to, you know, get fit. I want to lose a bit of weight or whatever. And then when something like this happens, obviously, I immediately start thinking, oh, now I oh, can't no. do anything. <laughs> I can't do all that jogging I wasn't already doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's that classic thing of like having the, the option taken away. Mm. It's like, if my knee wasn't bad, would I have done any of it anyway? Probably not. But now the option's not there. I feel like I'm being restricted. and I don't like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, rest in it and also kind of accepting that it's a problem has been difficult because we're quite good at just sucking it up and cracking on, aren't we really? And so like when I've kind of mentioned it at work, you know, I've been told to rest it. I've been offered like getting someone else in to cover my shifts. Like, and, no, I need the money. But yeah, but I'm also just like, to me, it's not that bad. I'm just like, oh, it hurts a bit and it's a bit weak and I can't really walk on it properly. It's not a big deal. Whereas to anybody else that looks at it, they're like, you need to rest it. You can't be on your feet all day for three full days in a row at work. And I'm like, no, no, it's fine. I'll be fine. I can cope because I think we're so used to dealing with difficult situations or slightly uncomfortable yeah. situations well i mean bearing in mind this time last year we were going through italy and i had a completely screwed up leg yeah for at we, the time it was like what two two weeks of yeah, pretty solid a lot walking. Of walking and every day wasn't it pretty much your mm -hmm. your leg top of your leg started hurting yeah because you had like a nerve that had gone funny yeah, or something like a tra trap nerve or something so you you still committed to that two weeks of of yeah a lot of walking, yeah. despite the fact that your leg a lot was of walking hurting all went the time. up a volcano. Yeah, uh. just about. <laughs> still managed to run down the volcano. Yeah, and you you made it, mm -hmm. but you 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 kind of you did the same thing that I think I do with my I've been doing with my knee is just that sort of cracking on. We're used to getting through stuff that's not ideal for us, that's a bit uncomfortable. And so even if it's a physical issue, we, we I think we find it quite easy to just... Well, if anything, physical issues are easier to get through than like social issues. Yeah, we're just like, it's fine, I can deal with it. We're just kind of used to dealing with it, do you know what I mean? It's been difficult to rest it because I don't want to just sit and do nothing. Whereas I think a lot of people would probably appreciate the opportunity to just sit and do nothing. And also, I haven't really been able to accept that it could be a problem and how important it might be to rest it because to me it's just a minor thing that I can just get through and deal with. <laughs> well, we'll give it until sometime next week and if it's not any better, we'll, we're getting you in knee support. Yeah, I'm being really stubborn on that as well. I don't want to spend money on a knee support, so I've tried to make one, everything, and just I don't want to buy a knee support. <laughs> but yeah, I think as as far as like the ADHD brain goes, it tends to take us ages to kind of get the executive function together to go, yeah, I'm actually going to go to the doctors about this. Yeah, and then sometimes it can be so long that it's become a whole other issue yeah. or a more serious issue um, but then you know there's all, usually some level of anxiety attached to that which kind of make tends to make us go like oh it's not that bad is it is it worth yeah going but again like i think it's probably just because i've had to patch myself up a lot mm -hmm. over the years with various injuries and such and like i've done enough first aid courses that I know for the you know what to do for various numbers of different things mm -hmm. that could possibly go wrong. So, folks, remember rice, rest, yeah. ice. I know it's compression and elevation, but you could just do. Oh yeah, rest and ice. <laughs> rest yeah. and ice. That's yeah. R ice. Rice. That's that's the, the more more I mean, important thing. That's right? all I've been doing, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. Who compresses it? Not me. Who's got time for compression, no. <laughs> elevation? Not me. 
I'm too busy not resting it yeah. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> too busy to rest, can't I? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Refuse to compress. <laughs> too short for elevation. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the problem is that all three of the, the whole ice section depends on the R. Like, you kind of have to rest in order to ice, compress, or elevate. Yeah, a little bit. And so if your mind is an ADHD mind and you can't rest, then you can't ice either. No. So you're a bit stuffed, aren't you, really? <laughs> no rest, no ice. No. Oh, yeah, this... Uh... Today, as this is going out, we will be up in Hull. Ooh, yeah. Or should I say, mm. moo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we're going to go see some Highland cows. We are. Because it was part of one of your Christmas presents mm-hmm. that we've finally been able to organise. Yep. To go see some Highland coos. Coos. Yeah, this place is... Super popular and super limited, so getting a book in is really hard because it's like they just sell out of tickets really quickly. Yeah. And also they've had a lot of trouble with flooding. This place is called Dumble Farm. They've had a lot of trouble with flooding because the weather's been awful for the past couple of months. Um, and they've just about um, cleared up now. So we have managed to book the experience that I wanted to do which includes meeting and giving Highland cows some cuddles and then you get to go in a little bus that they drive you around and you can go and feed and stroke and meet the the bigger ones that are a bit too chunky for cuddles Mm -hmm. because they've got big horns um I'd still cuddle them but (laughs) And then you get to meet like their other little their little friends as well. So I think they've got some goats and some alpacas. Um, you could go say hi yeah. to. Yeah. So so look out. For, um, we can probably try and. I mean, if we remember, that is to put something up on the on the Instagram page about that. Yeah, we should probably put some pictures up. We probably should, shouldn't fun. we? That we'll start doing that. We'll start putting yeah. pictures of things. Up. Not of things like my knee, but well, no. <laughs> things that we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's my bad knee. <laughs> but yeah, so that's going to involve a bit of an early start, which is usually not ideal for your no. your brain's kind of clock, your brain's internal clock. Um, we've got a big, big drive. But it'll be worth it because we get to hug some cows, mm-hmm. brush some cows, feed some cows, and just be happy. <laughs> <laughs> but more more info on that when we've actually when done it. Happens, it. Yeah. <laughs> so catch that in. That'll be a fortnight. Catch it in two weeks. Yeah. I've got um one more thing that I'd actually just like to do a little a little mention slash shout out of oh, yeah. um, just at the end. Um, as we have mentioned previously this year, we had the three baby guinea pigs born that we've kind of brought up. And a couple of weeks ago, the two hairless ones moved out because Cookie was being too feisty, <laughs> winding them up. So they left to be adopted from the actual kind of RSPCA centre. Now, unfortunately, about, what will it be, two weeks as this goes out, one of them, for some reason, passed away. Um, So that was (laughs) right Twix. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, we don't know why, but, yeah, that happened. And that was was Mm. very sad, but... There's a little a little shout out to her, but also her her sister, our other one, Leibniz, um, has been adopted by a very, very experienced and knowledgeable person down in my my hometown, Birmingham. Um, and she's gonna go and live with many friends 
with somebody that really knows what she's doing. Yeah, she'll fit right in with the rest of the Brummies, screaming her head off. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's a perfect fit for Birmingham. Yeah. It's a bit of a scraggler, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's what's going on with those two. And we still have Cookie. He's up for adoption. We will only have him until next Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is because we are going on holiday the day yeah. after. So <laughs> um, he's got to go and live with the centre people so they can look after him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's our piggy situation currently. And although it was really hard and really kind of weird losing the one, I'm just really pleased for, really pleased for Liebner's. Mm being adopted and, and living somewhere that's so good because like that was the main thing that you know i was sort of lingering sad about and worried about was just her being on her own because she's yeah. not been on her own since she was born but to know that she's gone on quite a quite a journey yeah. um and she's gonna have many friends that's very nice so that's a nice thing Apparently, she's made herself at home very quickly. <laughs> There's no surprise. <laughs> but yeah. Shout out to Right Twix. Yeah, shout out to her because she was pure chaos in a small, tiny package. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly one of the loudest guinea pigs we've ever had. Yeah, I think she was probably the loudest guinea pig they've ever had in the centre as well, yeah. from what I've heard. But yeah, a little shout out because. I like people to know that she was around. <laughs> Next episode, we will have already been on holiday. Yes. So mm-hmm. we will have been on holiday before we record it. So that means we'll be able to talk about the going on holiday. And, and the cows. Yeah. And kind of, you know, what it means for our brains to go on holiday that's and i know we technically covered going on holiday in a separate iteration of the podcast about the same time last year actually um you can do it again but it's a very different holiday it is no spoilies yet no spoilies but it's a very different holiday so look forward to that in two weeks time Uh so that'll be the 12th of may i want to say yeah so look forward to that on 12th of May. Uh, that'll be our next episode. Suit? Episode. episode. Anyway, we'll leave you to it. Thanks for <laughs> listening to this episode of The Autistic Experience. Soon. We'll be back in two weeks with another one. Go follow us on Instagram at The Autistic Experience for probably some cow photos at some point. Hopefully. Hopefully we remember. Yes, we will remember. I will remember. I mean, that's a brave thing for you to say, considering we literally talked about all the times you forgot stuff. Yeah, but it's today. cows, so I'll remember. <laughs> well, luckily we've got uh, you saying that on the record, so if it doesn't uh, turn out, then we know who to blame, don't we? Yes, I will take full accountability. Mm-hmm. Look forward to the cows. Look forward to the cows. All right, we'll see you next week have a good one uh, but of course um, as we will be very much doing over our holiday you go get that free lunch yeah well, yeah we will